Peace, and welcome to the official, the official World Book Day Book Club. And I'm your host, Kenny Baraka. And if I was referring to myself in the third person, I'd say he is super stoked to be joined by a titan in British literature, Benjamin Zaphaniah. Benjamin is the author of the new heart-stopping, nail-biting historical adventure, Windrush Child. How you doing today, Benjamin? I'm okay. I'm awake. <laughs> and we're here. Yeah. All praise. Yes, yes, yes. Um, let's jump right into it. Can you tell us a little something about Windrush Child? Well, a, a couple of years ago, um, and actually it's still happening, there's a lot of talk about the Windrush generation, about these people that came over from the Caribbean to Britain and about their lives. And some government policies overnight made them illegal. Most of these people are in their 60s and 70s. But then I thought, when a lot of these people came, they were children. You know, they were five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, I wanted to tell a story from a child's point of view and what it was like growing up. So it's about this boy that's living in Jamaica. The boy thinks he's in paradise. He goes like that and there's a mango, you know, he's, Carrots are growing here. Yes, grapefruit. <laughs> and his father invites him or tells him to go to Britain for a better life. Yeah. He ends up in Manchester in one bedroom, one bed seat. And he's thinking, is this a better life? Um, and it's about when he goes to school, sometimes he experiences racism. Sometimes he has other problems. He has problems with his parents not understanding why he's in Manchester, why he's left wonderful Jamaica. Yeah. And and it follows him until he's until almost present day. Yeah. And then the, the, I don't want to give the end away, but it, it's um it's an ending that many people of that generation had faced. So it's about being born in Jamaica, coming to Britain with your parents' dream of helping the mother country and bettering yourself, and how sometimes it can go wrong. Clearly, history is a, a huge part of our development as human beings and, and as, a, as a culture and a civilization, and as a community. Can you tell us a little bit about writing and weaving history into your writing and into a book, into, into a piece of fiction? This book is the quickest book I've ever written. I wrote it in about eight months. Usually my books take a couple of years. It's the most research book I ever done. Because when Leonard, the main character in the book, leaves Jamaica, I wanted to get the precise day, the precise ship. I wanted to know what the weather was like when he left. I wanted to know what the weather was like when he landed in Southampton. I checked the, the train timetables back then. I. I enjoyed doing that research um, and it, it was hard work, but I wanted to get the atmosphere, the environment, um, the weather, everything. I wanted to get that right so I can tell this fictional story so it would seem more true. Yeah. Because in many ways, this is what a lot of people experience. I always say that I like my fiction to be true. Mm. So when you read it, it's, I've got nothing against fantasy novels and things like that. I, I, I like that kind of thing. But what I write, I like it to be realistic. Mm. You spoke about Leonard, our protagonist. Leonard's grandmother, or grandma in the book, gives him a piece of advice, and that's lions always roar. Was that a message that you wanted readers to come away with? Yes, because I think you have to be brave. Lions are very loving. When they sit together, they groom each other. They care for each other, <laughs> right? But if you mess with the lion, <laughs> the lion will fight back. So, you know, in, and in the Caribbean, the lion is a very, is a very common symbol of strength. And, um, and what... Lena's grandmother was trying to tell him was, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to defend yourself. Yeah. Sometimes it's going to get tough. Sometimes it's going to be difficult. 
but use your voice and roar if you have to. Speaking of family, it's not too personal. The book is dedicated to your twin. Yes. <laughs> All right. Inviting her to read and enjoying that. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the importance of reading to you and why you want that for her? You know, I was raised in a family, in a house that had no books. Mm. We didn't really read. It wasn't really encouraged unless it was just to pass exams for school. And I always had a love of books. I even liked the shape of them. Um, and I managed to develop a love of books and I started writing and ironically, I've become a writer. Um, but there are many members of my family that just don't write. They look at me and they're really happy because I'm famous, but they don't really read what I write, you know? And this book, Windrush Child, first of all, my biggest source of research was my mother. Mm. Because it's almost around the same time my mother came to England. But when I was thinking about dedication, I thought, you know, my tw she's my twin sister and she's never read one of my books, you know? And I just thought this w should be one she wants to read. Yeah. And um, the last time I spoke to her, she said she's halfway through it, oh, but wow. she's been halfway through it for about six months. <laughs> She's reading it very slowly. <laughs> Good literature takes time to digest. It does. I'll take your word for it. It does. It does. I'll tell her you said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, reading books, the importance of. Can you, can you tell us what your favorite book is, or a favorite book? I have a few. Um, my favorite book, well. I think a, 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 one of my favorite books and a book that really changed me was a book called A Book of Nonsense by Mervyn Peake. Mm. Now, um, a lot of people think of, when they hear A Book of Nonsense, they think of Edward Lear, because um, they had a book of the same title. Um, but Mervyn Peake wrote A Book of Nonsense and it's just about crazy people living in jars and strange animals and things like that. But the way it rhymes, it's so, um rhythmic you know it's it, and it, it is nonsensical yeah. and i think sometimes you can read poetry just for the fun of it it doesn't always have to have a serious message a lot of my poetry does but this is just fun and it it made me when i was really young when i was thinking about writing and poetry it made me think yeah rhyming you can do it through a whole book he rhymes all the way through the book and i thought yeah if he can do it i can do it you know <laughs> And the strange thing is about Mervyn Peake that most of his other work is very dense, very yeah. serious. He wrote war poems yeah. and yeah. things like that. But this one book, um, A Book of Nonsense, is absolutely nonsense. He, he wrote another book called Gormagoth, which is similar. Here at World Book Day Book Club, we're big into our snacking, snacking and eating, noshing and, and reading, you know? Yeah, um, so if there was a... There was a snack. If there was a food one would partake in while enjoying Windrush Child. What, what might that be? After a healthy meal. Now I'm gonna. I'm thinking now that I've ate the meal, which would be a vegan butter bean stew cooked my mother style, with some rice and peas. Right. I would then sit down with my book, and I would have, as a treat, not every day, boys and girls, as a treat. I would have rich chocolate coffee vegan cake. Ooh. Sorry, I'm getting that here. <laughs> Control myself. Well, thinking about it makes me feel so good. I've got some in the cupboard. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll email that. you some later. Yeah. I'll email you some. <laughs> fax it, fax it. <laughs> um, okay, and finally, finally. Finally, if you were able, we have a lot of, of World Book Day book club readers who kind of sit around and they build and they, they, they talk about the books. If there was one question that you might pose to these readers about your book, about maybe even the character or what happens, what might that question be that you would pose to those readers? I guess my question would be, if you think about what happened to 
Lena, do you think, knowing what we know about the Windrush generation, about the sacrifices they made for people in this country, do you think that could happen again? An important question to ask. Yes. History helping us to look forward. We have to learn from history. Yes. We all make mistakes. When I was growing up as a boy, I made mistakes. Um, the thing was not to make the mistake again and again and again. Yes, right. So when I look at history, and I, I'm not always saying to people, um, you, you've got to be punished for things you've done in the past. You've got to learn from things you've done in the past and move on. We all make mistakes. I've made a couple. I think your hat might be a mistake. Right? <laughs> but... <laughs> Let's double down on the mistake. <laughs> but, you know, we learn not to do them again. No, it's actually it's a nice hat. I like it. It's just that I want it. Yeah. I'll give you some chocolate cake. You give me a yeah. hat, bro. Two slices for the hat. <laughs> One and a half. Yeah. And actually, that that's, that's it for the questions. It's been beautiful talking to you. So thank you to Benjamin Zafanaya and thank you for joining us here on the official World Book Day December Book Club. We hope you've had a fantastic time thinking, hearing, and listening, even reading books. And please, please, please let us know how much you like, no, loved Benjamin Zafanaya's Windrush Child. From Kenny Baraka and the World Book Day Book Club, peace.